Hello, everybody, you relentless warriors, and welcome back to Relentless Life. It's great to see everybody in the second podcast of Relentless Life, and thanks for joining in on the first one. So you came back for some more. Good for you. Um, You have uh, a good sense of patience, probably, dealing with me and listening to my voice. So thank you for that. And again, if you want to hear anything else, this is what we t- this is the place where we talk about fitness and nutrition and anything else that matters to you or me and just living a healthier and happier life. Keeping the doors open and doing that. I'm very excited about talking on this subject because this is something that's near and dear to my heart. It is something that I've held on to for a while. I don't talk about it a lot. In fact, I don't know if I've ever publicly discussed this. Now, I allude to some of these things, and um, I've embraced these over the years, but I don't know if I've actually done a video on these 10 different steps. Now, if you go through some of the videos on this particular channel before I was doing podcasting, I was doing videos and I did start to bring these out on a like vlogging form to share these uh, uh, particular steps, kind of a mindset. It's this is a mindset of habit and developing habits to, again, not just live a healthier and happier life, but a healthier, happier, more successful life, whether it's a, a more physically successful life, a more spiritually successful life, more financially successful life, or even just in a fitness world of success. It's wherever you want to translate this. These are the steps you take in the morning that I find to be the most successful. Um, you keep them to yourself, but people will eventually see where you're growing on that. Now, these steps, you can embrace them. You can take certain tidbits of them, or you can uh, completely do all 10 of them. And I think if you even just take one of these things as a morsel in your life to be just a little bit better than what you're doing, I think you're going to see some benefits. However, this, this truly taking all of them encapsulates the, the full meaning of what I'm trying to talk about um, in, in, in making changes. So if you're looking towards the new year, I know I kind of talked about it on the last video, talking about the new year. I always say, if you're going to start some resolution, start it before the new year happens. You prepare yourself a base and that base will get you ready for the true new year when it comes around. I actually like resolutions. I just don't like when people wait till January 1st or 2nd or 3rd or whenever it is to do it. If you find something that needs to be resolved or needs to be improved, you should do it immediately, especially if it means something to you. Um, So here it is. I'm sharing it before the new year. And whenever you are listening to this, you can, you can take advantage of it regardless of, of what time of the year it is and say, all right, I'm going to make changes immediately, meaning first thing in the morning. And that's going to be um, apropos uh, to uh, starting off with my first step. So these are 10 steps in my eyes uh, that will help you in, in, in success on wherever you want to go. First one is a 4.30 wake up, 4.30 a.m. wake up. Uh, right away, I, I probably lost a lot of people, and I understand that. A lot of people don't like to wake up early. I get it. Sometimes you're in a lifestyle where, wherever your job is, it, cannot, it does not allow you to wake up at 4.30 in the morning. What I would say to you before I get into this is adjust your life in such a way where you're giving yourself at least two and a half to three hours before you start your day. It's two and a half to three hours of you time. It is not for anybody else to infiltrate in that world. The reason why I like the 430 is most people are not up and it gives me two and a half to three hours of uninterrupted, unadulterated me time to build on my mind, my body, my soul, my spirit, and everything else that I'm trying to grow on. And so it's one of those things where you have to keep it again, keep it close to your chest and own it. So it doesn't necessarily have to be 430, but religiously make it a being in your life to say, I'm checking this off the list. I'm giving myself minimum two extra hours uh, before my day starts or after my day. However, I do recommend this goes in before your day. And as you get through this entire list, you'll understand that that um, all of these sort of intertwine with each other, making a full kind of smooth symbiotic relationship with each other, almost like a symphony. 
and uh, this this synergy together all works in one hand. All right, I'll stop with the poetic words and let's get right into it. 4.30, wake up. Here's why. Getting an early start sets the tone for the day. Waking up at 4.30 a.m. allows you to enjoy the peacefulness of the morning, giving you time to focus on your self-care and personal growth before the demands of the day begin. First thing in the morning, you are focusing on you and getting up early is imperative. Now, let me be very clear about this. This early morning wake up is not a flex. This isn't something that you post about. This isn't something you put on social media. Don't wake up a few times early and let everybody know in the world that you wake up at 4.30. You literally blew it if that's where you're doing it. If you're doing it to flex, you're not even on the right video. You're not even on the right channel. You're probably not going to be a relentless warrior. You're not going to relate. I am talking to the 1%. And this is not something you use to flex. You use this for yourself. So now that I've lost the other 99%, let's continue on and let me explain to you what I'm talking about when I'm saying this isn't a flex. This truly is something for you, right? So if you're going to wake up at 4.30, you, you ultimately have to keep it sort of a secret. So people who, other people who do wake up early because they just have, they're just workaholics, they'll bother you at 4.30 or 5.30 or 6.30 because they're like, oh, well, he's up. Yeah, I don't want you to know that I'm up. And there's a reason why. From 4.30 to about 8 o'clock, I like that to be me time. Now, sometimes I'll cut it at 7.30, but I want to at least give myself three hours. I'm selfish. I want three hours. My day shouldn't start till at least 7.30. Sometimes it's later than that. Because if I don't work on me, there's no way I can help anybody else out at my best abilities. So working on you first is extremely important. And you cannot do that if you share it with social media. I'm not a fan of sharing things when you're trying to better yourself. Now, pause that for a second because it was brought up to my attention, you know, curious why, you know, I recommend you do not share your goals. There's a couple of reasons behind that. Um, first off, when you share your goals with people that you love, a lot of times, immediately, once it's out there, all the, all the motivation, all the dopamine, all the, the drive towards it usually goes away because, you know, with somebody that believes in you and cares about you, they're like, they'll give you a bunch of attaboys. And it's not like they need, usually, they're not going to keep you accountable to a goal that you made, made for yourself. The truth of it is, you really know if your goals are working when somebody close to you actually brings it to your attention, which is the major reason why I, I, I kind of recommend don't, talking, or don't talk to anybody about your goals, um, especially the ones that are close to you, because the ones that are close to you will recognize something is truly different. You know, something has changed in your life and they'll bring it up to you. And then you could talk to them about it. Like, yeah, I've been doing this. I'm kind of keeping it on the down low. This 4.30 a.m. wake up is that first one. Do not use it as a flex. I know people who occasionally wake up at this time and they want the world to know about it. They send out all the company emails. They'll text early in the morning. Well, I'm already up. What are you doing? It's not for that. It's not to flex. It's not to be a workaholic. It's not to be a company person. It's, to, it's for you. It's for your mind, body, and spirit, for you to build yourself and better yourself. It's not for a company to take ownership of you because that's what they'll do. The moment they think you're up at 4.30, they will bother you at 4.30. I hold a hard line. Don't bother me. Don't text me. Don't call me. Don't reach out because I will not reach out. I will not answer your call. If I'm in the gym, I used to do this, but I will not answer a call when I'm in the gym. It can't be that important. It can wait. Now, people who don't usually call me that are loved ones, that's different. But that's, that's, we're talking about different things at this time. Again, 4.30 a.m., make it religious. Don't share it. That's rule number one on 4.30. Um, another major rule, when you're setting a time, you do not, I'm going to say this, I'm going to repeat it multiple times, and I want you to repeat it to yourself. Do not hit the snooze button. Do not have a snooze button. Do not ever consider even thinking about the snooze button. Do not set your alarm clock at four o'clock and say, oh, it'll just give me a time to lay around and I'll wake up at 4.30. Nope, don't do that. That doesn't work. 
do not have 10 backup alarms that go off at 4.30, 4.35, 5.30, 6. No, 4.30 is the time. Now, I'll tell you why it works, but we have to go through all 10 steps and then you're like, you'll have an aha moment to recognize why 4.30 will eventually be a lot easier for you to wake up. Once you hit the snooze, you eliminated it. It doesn't count. You did not wake up at 4.30 at that point. The smooth, the smooth, the snooze button, as smooth as it may sound, is literally a catastrophe for the rest of the day. Don't use it. Eliminate it from your vocabulary. I'm going to come up with shirts that have a snooze on it with a big cross through it, like the Ghostbusters symbol, crossing out the ghost. It is absolutely a horrific invention. I hate it. I do not use it. When the alarm goes off, you get up. That is the point. And, you, and, and it, I, I'm, I know it sucks. That's the hardest part of the day. I'm telling you, waking up at that time is never easy. It gets easier, but it's always a drag. I never want to get out of bed. I'll be honest with you. I never want to wake up. I w- always want to sleep in. Always. But I don't because the grind, the hustle, the drive, my goals, my dreams, my ambitions are far more important than hitting the snooze button. That, If you remember nothing else from this little rant, remember this. There are no snooze buttons in this series of 10 that leads you to success. There's none. Don't do it. If you're going to commit to this, you will not have that option. Now, now, the hardest part, again, is getting out of bed. The only way you get out of bed is when you have a purpose. And so these other nine play into that, and they're the prep to get you up and get you going. And a lot of times, some of this prep is the night before. So if you're listening to this in the midday, you have to prep for it tonight if you're going to start it tomorrow. And that's my recommendation. If you really, if you try to, if you start to believe in this and say, ah, I want to give it a shot. You, then start it tonight. You can prep the list. You can prep, prep the things as we talk about them. And you literally can do this tomorrow morning. Um, and uh, let me know how it goes. All right. That's the 430. That's number one. I, I promise I won't rant <laughs> that much on all of them. But, you know, this one, this one kind of sets the stage. It's extremely important to me because... Um, I, I think there's a misconception about waking up early they, you know, these business people, sometimes I'll, I'll see the flex all the time on LinkedIn. Yeah, you got to wake up or wake up early and grind it out. I wake up at 4am and I'm already doing research and I'm already looking for this and shut up. And nobody wants to hear that. Nobody cares that you're a company man. This has nothing to do with the grind of making a bunch of money. This is about bettering yourself. The 430 time is to a lot that time for personal growth. You can't talk about it. Um, it's like fight club. First two rules is you don't talk about the 430 wake up. Rule number three, what's, new, what's rule number three? Someone said it, don't hit the snooze button. All right, there is no snooze button. <laughs> I listen to it, yeah. I got the fake tooth, I don't like it. I don't like it, so uh, you're gonna have to deal with the gap. I kinda like, I, I've grown to like that gap. It's getting fixed, but not yet. So deal with it. Anyway, all right. Number two, make your bed. It's very simple. It sounds childish, right? Sounds childish and stupid. I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you're in a hotel. I don't care if you're at a friend's house. I don't care if you're at the in the hospital. I want you to make your bed when you wake up. Now, I guess if you're in the hospital, that's probably you're gonna have to stay in bed. But if you're getting out of bed and you're leaving the hospital, make the bed. It'll, it'll throw them off. It, it'll, it would, it'll wickedly throw them off. I promise you. I did that once in the hospital. They didn't get it. They, didn't, they did not understand why I'm... Anyway, make your bed. Now, let me talk about this. So here's what I wrote down, and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of we'll delve into it. This simple act of a keystone habit that establishes a sense of order and accomplishment. Making your bed creates a small win early in the day setting a positive tone and fostering a sense of discipline. Now, the point is, the moment you wake up, you already have a task. Remember I said, you know, when you wake up, a lot of times people say, I'm going to wake up at 4.30 in the morning every day. Okay, and then what are you going to do? 
uh, make breakfast, watch TV, watch the news. It just gives you an opportunity to get get upset earlier by watching the news and get depressed earlier by focusing on the mundane that most people get blown away by. And then before you know it, you're sitting on the couch or whatever, and you're sleeping before you have to actually get to work anyway. Have tasks ready. The first one is very simple. Make your bed. First task. It might seem simple, but if you cannot accomplish the simple things, the bigger things will never matter. And I promise you this list, super simple. None of it's difficult. You know, the difficulty starts through the day, but if you hit these simple steps, it will help. I, you'll, have to, you'll have to trust me on this. Give it a shot. Actually, don't trust me. Try it. Try it for a month. Tell me you're not making gains from that, whether it's spiritual, physical, mental, fitness-wise, financial. They, they, they all have their benefits. Making your bed. Uh, this comes from this ultimately this mindset, uh, you know, it was a lifestyle of mine uh, for years, but th th this comes from a, a speech by Admiral McRaven. He, there's a motivational talk he gives. You'll find it on YouTube if you just look up making your bed speech and this will pop, this will kind of pop up. And he really, he literally talks about how the military Every morning you make your bed. I, I'll never forget it. You know, you go through, you wake up to revelry. Da, 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 yeah, believe it or not, that's what you did. Um, it start. There was no snooze button. You're 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 ripping out of bed. You're making that bed immediately. Um, it's task number one, and it, it it's it helps you complete the small tasks to start the day and preps you for the bigger ones. And that it's, it's the mindset of like, okay, that's one thing done. If nothing else gets accomplished successfully this day, I'm going to have my bed made. There, there's always that light at the end of the tunnel. By the end of the day, I know I'm coming home to a clean apartment and a, and a made bed and, and clean dishes. It's very important to me that all those things in order on my personal life are, are handled before the rest of my day is there. Because if my personal life is in chaos, it's really difficult to, for my mind to, to be ordered, in, in order, and, and, and to actually run things orderly when I'm surrounded by a mess, and perhaps a messy bed, or unfolded clothes, or un, you know, dirty dishes that, that haven't been finished. So it's the little things that I think matter. Making your bed it's task number one. Not only that, it keeps you from hitting the snooze button. It's like, oh, I gotta wake up, but I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna make my bed. Why is that important? I will tell you this. I said getting out of bed, waking up at 4.30, it sucks, it does. But the moment you get to your feet and you like, you're, you're, you're slowly trying to get your sight and you're wiping the sleep out of your eyes <laughs> And you're throwing the pillows around and you're, you're, you're throwing the sheets up and the bed spread over. By the time you get the pillow and it's all straightened out, you're starting to wake up and you're feeling a little bit better. And it kind of gives you, it puts things a little bit, um, I guess, in perspective. Like, okay, the, first, the worst part's over. I'm up. And now the, the bed's made so I accomplished something. And now I can move on to step number three. So... 4.30 a.m., wake up, make your bed. Number three, of course, you can expect this from me, something physical, do 10 push-ups. I don't care if it's on your knees. I don't care if it's, uh, you know, whatever the 10 push-ups is. I don't care if you can't do 10 push-ups, do five. It, it's, the the, the push-ups are not the point. It's, to, it's the, the meaning behind the push-ups of doing something minor but physical and getting blood flow, let me read what I have here. The reason of doing 10 push-ups is engaging in a brief physical activity like push-ups, it jump-starts your metabolism, increases blood flow, and boosts energy levels. It's also a quick and effective way to invigorate your body and mind, and that's very true. Just moving a lot of times, getting blood flow into the area of wherever it's at will help you feel better. A lot of, a lot of times, what, what I would do before before I, you know, I would start a, a, a training class back in the day. I would, if, if I felt like everyone was down, we would just jump. We would start the warm up by just jumping around. Jumping around gives blood flow. So if you can't do push ups, jump around. If you can't walk, do arm raises. If you, if you're struggling with push ups, do squats. 
I don't care what it is. It's, it's 10 of something that's super simple, but physical. It's got to be, you know, a minor physical thing to challenge yourself. And guess what? It's a third thing that you can cross off the list. Before probably 445, you've now marked three things off the list. And in some cases, with some people, unfortunately, the way society is, you've probably done three more things than what some people will do their entire day. Some people don't get out of bed. They lay around and watch TV all day. I don't know how they get away with it. Their bed's never made, and they're definitely not doing anything physical. You've accomplished three more things. And I'm not, it's not a dig to those people. I'm just, uh, just kind of laying out the land of what the rat race is all about. You know, otherwise, if we're going to be locked in a cage... Uh, which in some cases, that's how it is. That's how I felt when I was in the military. That's how sometimes it feels when you work for corporate America. That's how it feels sometimes just in life in general. If we're not careful, we can lock ourselves in a cage. And the way to free yourself is to embrace certain things out of the norm that will better you. And believe it or not, a little bit at a time, 10 push-ups every day in the morning to start your day will better you just a little bit. And that's all it takes. That's step number three. All right. This next one's pretty simple. Step number four, drink lemon water. Now, again, some of you are going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, you did this on, on some of your videos. And I did. If you look in the, if you look on this channel, you look at some of the original videos of this one, I started a new vlogging thing that I was going to do for an entire year and things changed where I didn't, but I did like 60 of these videos in a row. And uh, drinking lemon water was one of them. And you're like, well, that doesn't make sense. But there are some health benefits behind it. And then I'll talk to you about my philosophies as to why I, I recommend drinking lemon water. But here it is. Hydration is key to overall health. Very true. And adding lemon to your water provides a refreshing vitamin-rich kickstart. That's also true. It aids digestion, boosts immunity, and contributes to clearer skin. I didn't know that. I looked it up before I did this, but if it, if it helps with clearer skin, great. And it's true. There are a lot of health benefits to drinking lemon water. Um, that's not the major reason why I do it. Now, it's a part of it, but it's not the major reason. To me, it's just another simple task that goes along with the first three uh, steps. Not only that, I will say after the first three steps, you know, you just did some push-ups and now you're going into the kitchen, you're squeezing the lemon and it's in the water it's, and you start to drink it. It's refreshing. It helps to wake you up just a little bit more. So remember when I talked about this first step, I said the hardest part of the day is step number one. It's waking up and getting out of bed. It's so true. <laughs> just saying that made me have to take a sip of water. It's so true. I hate waking up every day. It's not, there's no, I hate it, but I, I, I am up early every day. I'm up at 4.30 every day. Um, now, some, some days are easier than others. Some days I wake up before the alarm goes off. I know I'm kind of backpedaling, but I want to get back to lemon water. And I'm going to tell you why I'm talking about this in just a moment. But, you know, other days it's tough. You know, that alarm goes off and I know, I know it's going to be a struggle that day. I just know. But again, the rule of no snooze and knowing that there's some tasks I have to accomplish, what I tell myself is let's get through the tasks and then I can have a good indication of how I truly feel. Maybe I'm getting sick. I don't know. And I won't know that until I start going through my tasks. By the time I get to the lemon water and I start to drink that, life becomes a little bit better, a little bit brighter, a little bit nicer, um, and a little bit more refreshing, uh, quite literally. It, it's... Uh, it's, it's like a reward for the first three tasks. And that's ultimately why I put lemon water on number four. It's, it's your first reward of the day for completing the first three tasks. Uh, it's very simple to do. Uh, really no work for that. You could prep it uh, the night before and just squeeze the lemon in there and it's ready to go. Uh, that's step number four. But it's, it's, it's a very important one. Don't skip it. Okay, step number five. We're moving right along. Uh, this one is kind of a reward, but it's also takes a little bit of effort just to kind of get it all set up and done. And it's a two minute breathing exercise. Now, I don't care what type of breathing you do. I prefer box breathing. Um, it's kind of you're taking a deep breath in, you're holding it. It's a slow exhale and then you hold it on the exhale. And I do that for two minutes. And let me explain myself. Here's what I wrote down. Taking just two minutes for mindful breathing can reduce stress, 
increase focus, and promote a sense of calm. It's a powerful tool to center yourself and prepare for your challenges of the day. I love it. And, you know, it's not always, I don't always do box breathing. Sometimes that two minutes is a little bit longer. One thing I will say, I like to do the breathing with my eyes closed and I follow a basic app. It's just a breathe app. Um, there's multiple apps out there. I'm not going to rec recommend any, you know, I think any app will do. I think two minutes will suffice. Um, if you want to go longer because you like the, 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 uh, the effects of it, that's fine. That's fine as well. But two minutes is what I've been doing for a while. And I think those are the best results. Um, I will say like I, the reason why I like to close my eyes, I focus on nothing but the breathing. That's it. I, I, I try not to think about the day. If it, if it already goes out there because I'm under a lot of stress for that day, I try to pull myself back and go right back into my breathing and really be at the moment at that point. So you're not, you're trying not to think about anything on the outside. And by the time you open your eyes, it's just a little bit nicer, probably a little bit quieter. And I'm a little bit more refreshed. Again, I had the lemon water. Now I'm starting to feel better. By the time the breathing is over, I'm almost fully awake. And then that brings us to step number six. And that's an easy one on breathing. Um, I didn't mean to just kind of skip over that quickly, but um, it's kind of cut and dry. We could do an entire podcast on breathing for sure. Um, in fact, we could do an entire podcast on every one of these steps uh, if we want to, but, um, they're, they're, you know, it's a brush stroke to give you an idea and they're pretty much self-explanatory and super simple. Uh, breathing, breathing is one of those. That's step five. All right, moving on. Step number six gets a little more complicated. Now, you know, so those of you who are watching, I'm holding up a three by five index card. You will need these or something like that, or you can just use a piece of paper, but the index card, or it's a, yeah, three by five or two by five, whatever it is. I don't know what this one is. I think it's a three by five. Um, here's what you, here's what I want you to do with the index card. And this is something we're talking about evening prep. This is something you should have out. So you're not looking for it. It should be super easy. All of these should be ready to go. The lemon water should be ready to go. The, the index card should be ready to go. Everything should be there and, and focused. So that way you're, you're not fumbling around and, and you, and you don't skip it. That's the whole point. So what's the point of this, this habit injects positivity in your mindset. How? Okay. I want you to write down one motivational quote on this index card. That's it. Just one. Why write it down? Well, you want to capture that quote and you want to carry it with you. And then by capturing a motivational quote on a small card, you create a portable source of inspiration that you can carry with you throughout the day. And that's the point. I don't care if you work at home. I don't care if you work in the office. It doesn't matter. With a three by five, five card, you can keep it on your desk. You can keep it in your pocket. Um, pull it out occasionally and look at it. Remind yourself what that motivational quote is. It should be a different one every day. Um, not that you can't revisit ones you enjoy, uh, but, but go back and literally revisit this numerous times throughout the day. Um, I, I don't know. I probably in the beginning, I would, I would forget about it and I would look at it once or twice lately. It's multiple times throughout the day. I have it right in front of me and it doesn't have to be a motivational quote. It could be anything that means something to you. It can be a statement that one of your friends said, it could be a Bible verse. It could be, um, you know, whatever you, something you've heard on the internet that, that just kind of helps you focus towards your goals. It could be one of your goals, uh, that you're trying to reach that you can keep going back and saying, all right, this is what I want to achieve. Um, it's not a to-do list. It's, it's very important. It's not a to-do list, um, to remind that this is just to keep your mind focused, um, and, and, and keeping your eye on the prize. So very simple. One thing I'll say about the motivational quote is I never throw them out when I'm done. And uh, we could pause here for a second because if you look in the link below, I left a PDF or I should have left a PDF. Let's find out if I failed that or not. Um, but when you, when you uh, get access to this podcast, uh, there should be a PDF in the comment section below or not the comment section, the description section below. Feel free to print out the list of things that I do. You can, you can make it your own, you can make a different one, or you can use this one. And I have, if you, if you notice on this, I have all these on a list and there's a little box next to it. I like the box. I think it's very important that you check that box off. 
because it's already a sense of accomplishment. We're not even at 5 a.m. yet. Promise me. I promise you, we're not at 5 a.m. yet. I've done this a lot of times. And before you realize it, by step six, you've already crossed out six things that you've accomplished for the day. You're not even at 5 a.m. yet. Most people are still sleeping. So uh, very important to do that. And what I do, I don't know if I finish this, I take this, this index card and at the end of the day, I staple it uh, to the list and I keep the list because th there's reasons behind that. Because there's sometimes you, you're, you're not going to accomplish one of these and you want to go back and say, ah, oh, I missed it that day. You know, let's try to accomplish more. All right, so that's number six. Let's get to number seven. And, and, and this one, I have to admit, I struggle with this one because, you know, originally when I did this, uh, I, I moved it to the evening. I found that I don't really pay attention in the evening. I start to look at the clock. I'm ready to go to bed and I don't really take it in. I, I will say out of the 10 steps, this one probably takes the most effort for me. Um, not that I don't like it. Uh, it, it just, for whatever reason, uh, it, it hasn't taken a priority. So I, I have been making it a, 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 a specific priority to do it in the morning. Um, and, and that's why I moved this up. It, it was it, in the beginning, it was at the end of the day, but um, right before the, the last one, I don't want to give it away yet. So number seven, read one chapter of a non-fictional book. One chapter, that's, that's it. Not one page, um, not a paragraph. You have to read the chapter. Uh, the interesting thing was, <laughs> the first book I picked when I first started this was a, uh, uh, and I didn't realize this when I did it, um, had 30 pages to, to the one chapter. So I will say, um, you know, some books are gonna be harder than others and, and some are gonna take longer than others. And I think the good thing with this is you don't have to accomplish it all in the morning. And this is one of those, this is one of those, uh, those habits that, you know, sometimes you're going to read a little bit in the morning, read a little bit in the afternoon when you have free time, and then a little bit at night. Now, one of the things I will say, I, I do feel like it's better if you find a book with smaller chapters, it's better to do this in the morning because this is when your brain is now firing up and it's at its sharpest. So then you can think about it all day, but you also retain that information a little bit better than if you were to go to bed and you kind of read it, but is, you know, are, is it really registering? Are you really learning anything? And before you know it, you're falling asleep. Um, so I do recommend doing this earlier on in the day and sometimes throughout the day that, that first book I, I put in here, um, I had to read it throughout the whole day to finish the chapters because they were all 30 to 35 page chapters and, and sometimes longer. So it is what it is. Um, but before you realize it, think about this. Let's pause for a second on step number seven. You know, people say they don't have time. And, and I think the reason why, uh, and I don't think, I think we can prove this. The reason why people say they don't have time is that we think we need to accomplish everything in big chunks. And, and that's what this list is the opposite of. It's tiny bits that you put together. It's literally bit by bit putting things together and they add up throughout the year. They, they do add up. Even the 10 push-ups, believe it or not, that adds up. And this reading one chapter of a non-fictional book, non-fictional, something that you're going to learn from, um, and I'll go into that in just a second, this adds up. You know, before you know it, you know, throughout the year, you're reading multiple books just by one chapter a, a day. And it's like, wow, I read, I read so, so many of these books, 10 books, 12 books, 13, 20. It depends on, you know, how many chapters. But before you do realize it, um, you, you've, you've allowed yourself to take more information in than normally you would. And that this isn't to say you can't read other books. This is just something in addition to what you're already doing. It's not a lot of time. Um, it's not a lot of effort either. And it's, it's literally, it's kind of driven towards something that you can do within a short period of time. Um, what I did discover is most of my books that I did pick after this have been something that I can do within the allotted time for the morning to get it done before the, that 7.30 to 8 o'clock time. And uh, uh, it hasn't stopped me from reading other books, um, but it, it has put me in a position where I, I have added more books to my reading as a result of this number seven on the list. Now, I, I said non-fictional book. It's got to be something that you're driving towards. Like, 
you want to learn from it. it. You know, let's just say, for instance, you want to get into real estate. So you read something to learn. It's got to be a tool that you can put in your toolbox and say, I bettered myself by one chapter a day. Um, let's say you want to be a personal trainer. I've, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people come back to me over the years and they wanted to, they wanted to do what I did. And, and, and so they, they studied for their personal training exam, whether it's NASM or ACE, or, you know, if you, if you really want to delve deeper, it's CSCS. Trust me, that's a tough one. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud that I have it. Uh, it, it will take more than reading one chapter a day to get good at C, you know, to actually get certified as a certified strength and conditioning coach. But, um, at the same time, you can, you can chip away at certain things. And before you know it, you have bettered yourself, um, by simply adding something to this list of 10 and number seven is a really good one. Um, one of my favorites at this point, because I've definitely benefited from it, but I will say I struggled with this one the most. Um, there were in the beginning, I will say the first, uh, I don't know, several weeks that I, I was going through them and, and this box was unchecked multiple times because I didn't complete it. And if you don't complete it, you can't cross it off the list. My goal is to hit all 10 of them. Um, that you will have days that you do not cross off all 10, but don't be forgiving with yourself. Make sure you cross it off the next day. Um, I'm, I'm, it, I'm always unforgiving about this. I, my goal is to try to hit all 10 every day. Now, sometimes life won't allow that, but do the best you can to you know, get multiple days in a row of hitting all 10 on the list. That's number seven. Let's pause and think about it for a while and uh, let Jake take a swig of water because he talks too much. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this list so far or finding some of it helpful. Some of you might already do this. That's great. If you're doing things that help, share it. Share things. We can, you know, we can, we can definitely uh, add new things to our life. And if you have uh, good suggestions, um, please leave that in the comments section. All right. Workout number, oh, I'm sorry, I gave it away. Number eight. Uh, number eight is super easy for me. It's hard for a lot of people, but it is definitely the, the most time-consuming thing, um, one of the most time-consuming things on the list. Now, as you can see, as we get later into the list, the book reading was, was a little bit more effort. Number eight is going to be a little bit more effort. And number nine, I think, is probably the most effort. Um, this one is, I want you to pay attention to this. Workout or active rest. Now, let me talk about that. Let me read what I, what I uh, wrote here. Physical activity is a vital overall health. It is vital for overall health. Whether it's a full workout or light active rest, moving your body in the morning enhances mood, promotes cardiovascular health, and builds strength. All those things that we do know. I am a big believer, always have been a big believer, in working out in the morning. Now, people have asked me numerous times, what's better in the morning or in the afternoon or at night? And people will tell me, I'm at my strongest in the afternoon. So I like to work out in the afternoon or I'm at my best at night. I just love to work out after a long day's work and get all the steam out and get all the aggression out and I feel better. Okay, but I, I still am a firm believer that you do something in the morning. Let me explain active rest. I think workouts kind of speak for itself, but active rest, people don't always get that. There is a huge difference between rest, active rest, and relaxation. <laughs> and especially rest and relaxation, it's not the same thing. Relaxation is me lounging on the couch and watching MMA all day or watching college football all day. That's relaxation. I'm doing absolutely nothing. And it doesn't benefit me. It, it's, it's not necessarily resting. It's relaxing. Because you, you, resting is literally shutting your mind down and maybe even taking a nap. That's actually going to be beneficial. Resting and watching TV, you're resting your body, but you're not technically resting your mind, your thoughts, and any of that. Um, so this is not what that is. You know, number eight is not active relaxation. That is not what I'm talking about. Um, it, it's active rest. Active rest could be walking. It could be going on the bike and going in and just going at a slow pace, maybe even walking on the treadmill, the elliptical, or, or just literally, you know, uh, you know, I said walking, but just kind of like pacing around and doing deep breathing again. You know, um, an, an active rest is a movement. Any type of movement will do. Now, 
I, I, I still lean on the workout side. I work out six days a week. I'm a big believer that you can do something physical seven days a week. Uh, I don't believe in days off when it comes to moving your body. Movement is therapy. Movement is medicine. Movement drives blood flow. It helps lubricate joints. If you have back pain, it will help improve that. A lot of times people have, oh, ankle pain, just rest it. Maybe, but let's try moving it first. Movement is key. So when I'm talking rest, I am always talking active rest, and I'm a big fan of movement. So, you know, however you want to take that, um, you shouldn't take days off when it comes to movement, ever. Uh, there's often not overtraining. It's probably inappropriate training. You're, you're not training correctly, but um, you're probably not overtraining. Our bodies can do a lot more uh, than, than we give, them, give it credit for. Now, the workout portion, you can always, it doesn't have to be a long workout. Now, the active rest is one thing, but I'm also going to lean on the workout. I actually get my full workout in the morning. And, and, and sometimes it gives me the opportunity to uh, work out again in the evening and do something else like cardio or swimming or things of that nature. Um, but, you know, my full workout is definitely a, a lot of time is allotted to those three hours to be in that, in, to, to be in the gym and actually working out. Um, and I, I like to do it six days a week. Now, again, it doesn't have to be long. I don't spend, you know, two hours in the gym. It's usually about 40 minutes to an hour. You can, you can click on this channel and I have 10 minute workouts, believe it or not, 10 minute workouts will make a difference. Uh, it, it's a myth that you have to work out two hours a day. Well, I worked out in the gym two hours a day. There's a good chance you overdid it. And, and you know, those big bites that we're talking about, that's why most people fail in, in the gym. That's why most people fail in fitness. That's why most people fail in life. They want to get everything done right away. And they, they don't know how to take small little bit steps. And that's all this is about. So the workouts don't have to be super long. It could be anything. Uh, studies have shown you don't have to do a lot of reps and sets. You can, you can do as, as little as four sets of something and go home and, and see benefits. And if you did that every day, you are going to see benefits. And what I mean by that is like, I'm going to do four sets of chest and I'm going to go home. I'm going to do four sets of back. I'm going to do four sets of legs. And it's not going to take you that long. And if you did that every day for six days a week and maybe did an active rest day, you will see tremendous amounts of benefits. And I'm not talking four exercises. I'm saying four sets. Studies have shown that they, you will see muscle growth. You will see um, increase of range of motion. You will see um, heart rate actually improving from doing four sets a day. So you can look it up. It's, uh, it's, it's actually... You know, nothing's guaranteed these days, but they're, they're getting a lot of good results to show that workouts don't have to be super long. So even a 10 minute workout will suffice. Um, if you don't want to do the workout, just walk. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Walk for 10 minutes, do something physical. That's number eight. You do not skip that one. That one's absolutely, there's, there's no fighting it every day. I want you to do something active. You cannot miss that day ever. It's unacceptable. There's never a reason to miss that day. I'm sick. So what? You can still walk. That's active rest. Oh, I can't do it. Doesn't matter. You can do it. If you can breathe and you can move, you could do some sort of active rest. I literally can't get out of bed. All right. So you can do arm raises. You can do, um, you know, air curls, literally like curling your arms in the air. Trust me, you'll get some benefit from it. Lateral raises without weights, raising your arms, breathe through it, doing stretches. You can do any of this. This is all active rest and you can actually turn it into a body weight exercise. It's absolutely unacceptable to miss that one on the list. I, I don't want to hear any excuses. I don't want to hear I can't. You can. You do not give yourself leeway on that one. All right. <laughs> this is the last one. Um, again, the, these get more and more difficult. This one this one, the difficulty just depends on you and your hustle. And that's number nine. Work on your daily hustle. Um, we'll go into that. You can decide what that is for you. But let me read what I, what I put. Devote focused time to your daily hustle, be it your business, a side project, or a hobby. This consistent effort compounds over time, propelling you towards your goals and fostering a sense of purpose. One of the problems I think we have in life is that 
we become our jobs or we become what we do. If you're a teacher, that's all you focus on. If you're, if you're in finance, that's all you think about is the finance structure. If you're an accountant, same thing. If you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, whatever the case is, a plumber, if you're an electrician, you can go, the list goes on and on and on and on. Do not allow what you do to be who you are. Always have something else in your back pocket. And I'm not suggesting it necessarily has to be something that generates money. It, 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 it doesn't have to be a side hustle that is a business. It could be a hobby. It could be something you're building on. Maybe you want to write a book. You should focus on that daily. Maybe you do want to start a side business. You should focus on that daily. Now, mind you, like I said, I kept these harder ones toward the end. These are going to be the ones that are going to be harder to cross off, but that's why they're at the end. But don't, that doesn't mean you ignore them. Just because it's number nine doesn't mean you have to do it at night. If you have time in the morning, focus on it. It's like, all right, I had a shorter workout. Okay, I read my chapter. Let's do this. Let's do a little bit. I got an hour before I have to you know, take a shower and go to work. All right, I'm going to work on my side hustle. Whatever that side hustle is, you decide that. Whatever that side hobby is, you make the difference. But come up with something. If you don't have one, get one. If you want to get certified in something, that's the side hustle. It can also fall into the other list when you go back to reading a chapter. So, um, yeah, going back to, you know, number seven, you know, they they can all kind of, uh, again, symbiotically like a symphony, they can all kind of intermingle and live a cohesive life of happiness and your list of 10. Um, you know, it's also important, you know, I, I think when, you know, I, I, I don't want to get depressing with people, you know, jobs can be rough and, you know, people get laid off or, or, or jobs will fire them after they've given a, a devoted amount of time. And you start looking around, it's like, this is what you lived for. And suddenly you were working for somebody else's dreams all this time. And you look around, and you're like, man, I have nothing. And that's not true. You do. You have more value than your job. If, if you gave more effort in your job than they require, that comes back to you very small. And I'm not saying you shouldn't give your best, you should. But if you give more than what you really require day after day after day, meaning you're cutting out family time, you're cutting out personal time, you're cutting out weekends, you're deciding not to take vacations. Oh, I'm going to just keep working. I'm going to work. I'm going to give my company more. I'm going to give them more. I'm giving them more. Let me tell you something. And I don't know yet because I'm not on my deathbed, but I will tell you this. When I'm on my deathbed, that job, that company those people are not going to care that I'm on my deathbed. And by the way, it's not going to matter to me, my family, and my friends, and anybody that cares about me that I gave a little bit extra effort for another job. That's not going to matter. What will matter is maybe I didn't sacrifice as much because I leaned more on my family, my friends, my purpose, and my side hustle. Don't let the job define you. Show yourself in the mirror Give yourself a conversation and, and, and remind yourself that you're worth more than what your job tells you you are. Your boss doesn't know you. Your job doesn't know you. Truly, and I'm not saying your job is bad, but even if it's great, you have to have other things than just that. And if it is a side hustle that generates money, great, even better. Because when they turn around and say, oh, thanks for the 20 years, by the way, you're fired. <laughs> It happens. And then what? Um, you have nothing? Or you do have a side hustle that you make full time and you turn around and you find out you make four times more, five times more, 20 times more than that company ever paid you. It happens. It happens a lot. Some of the best, most successful people got that way because they were fired. And they started to realize, ah, oh, wait a minute. You know, I have more value than that company tried to tell me I did. This one, you cannot skip. This one, if you don't have a side hustle, your job on number nine is to come up, your side hustle right now is to come up with a side hustle. Write it down. I want you to, if you you download this list and you print it out and it says work on your side hustle and you don't have one, cross it out and I want you to write, come up with a side hustle. And then I want you to, to write down multiple different things that you wanna focus on and pick one and focus on it. 
you need a side hustle. You need something that says, hey, there is an outlier, and if something goes awry, I have this. Again, doesn't have to be money generating, but it has to be purposeful for you to say, hey, this isn't what I am. That isn't what I am. But I'm gonna, I, I encompass all of this. So you get to define you, but you have to make sure you're taking steps forward for yourself in order to do that. And of course, having a side hustle is one of those steps. Make sure it's something for you. Make sure it's purposeful. It means something to you. And then you do not skip it. You work on it every day. All right. That kind of boils down the work list, the tough stuff. This one is where most people fail, believe it or not. Most people, you will fail at this. I promise you, I fail at it too. Even to this day. But you want to do your best to stay disciplined to this next one on the list. If you are sticking to my 4.30 a.m. wake up, like the snooze button, this is equally as important. And it's the bookend on the other end that literally solidifies the list from either crumbling like a bunch of soggy cards or staying solid like a great foundation that builds a huge sky rise. It's up to you. But if you do not stay disciplined with number 10, number one won't matter because you will fail at number one if you fail at number 10. And that is a 10.30 p.m. bedtime. (gasps) What? (laughs) Minimum. No later. Now, if you can get to bed earlier, great. More sleep is better. Now, I understand some people need less sleep than others. Um, I could probably relate to that crowd. Uh, But you still need a healthy, adequate amount of sleep. So... I I chose the bare minimum for me, which is six hours. I used to get four hours a day, and that is not healthy. That is not good for your heart. I don't care if it's, again, studies have shown that you need between six and eight hours, and I, I chose the bare minimum for me, and it happens to be wonderful for me. Six hours works. But it only works if I go to bed at 10.30, no later. I'm not talking 10.31, 10.32, 10.35, 11, midnight. You cannot stay up late and watch TV. You cannot stay up late and surf the web. You cannot stay up late and even work your side hustle. Because guess what? You are taking away from tomorrow. Now, we're not blessed. with. We don't know if tomorrow is going to exist, but it doesn't mean you can't prepare for it. Meaning your side hustle is important, but it's not more important than, than reaching number 10 and ignoring number 10, saying, all right, I'm going to work on my side hustle till 1 in the morning, and then I'll go to bed. Nope. I'll tell you why. Because then you won't wake up at 4.30. You'll end up getting dragged. You'll drag through. You'll, you'll be groggy. You probably, won't, you probably won't nail 50% of the list, and then you'll skip your side hustle that day anyway because you'll be too tired. This list is there for a reason. It's for accountability accountability to say, hey, you need to get to bed so you can do this all over again. It's about repetition. It's about building things over a long period of time. This isn't something that's guaranteed tomorrow. You're not going to see the results the first week, I promise. You won't. You'll just hate it. You'll hate it. And, and if you find a way to like it, it's because your brain is, is doing a good job of, of solid mindset. And you probably have been good at some of these anyway and didn't realize it. But your first couple of weeks are going to be tough. Your first three weeks are going to be tough. Your first six weeks, you'll start to develop a pattern. And that pattern will eventually merge into a habit. And that habit will one day morph into your lifestyle. And that is when you start to see the differences. People will see it in your life. I tell you, they will. 10 steps, they sound simple. They are. But it's little chunks. You're you're not trying to do this in a month. You're you're thinking about this on a 12-month period. And, you know, I'm telling you, if you stay dedicated to this, this simple list, and accomplish this as much as you can, as in, in, in many days in a row as you can, you will reach a lot of your goals. You will be happier. You will be healthier. You will have a, a more vibrant spirit. You will have a more purposeful life. 
you will look in the mirror and say, I understand my value. And trust me, your work, the people that work with you, for you, around you, whatever that is in your case, they will start to see it too because it will it will project from your voice, it will project from your body, and it will project from your demeanor. I say this a lot and I'll say it again, do not slouch. Walk through life with your shoulders back, your chest out, your chin up. Be proud of being you because if you're proud of being you, you'll help somebody else being proud of being themselves. Um, they always say hurt people, hurt people. Don't be that person. You, you, you can only be that person if you allow yourself to hurt yourself and don't do that. If you don't hurt yourself, you won't hurt others. You'll feel good and you'll be able to stand up to the bully Whoever that is, that could be corporate America, that could be your boss, that could be anybody around you that's trying to, to deter you or take you away from your goals, you'll have that ability, you'll have that confidence. But more importantly, by doing that, your sphere of influence will have a value to it as well. The people that you surround yourself with, it'll start to rub off on them. Or, or those people will eliminate themselves from you because they just don't relate to your lifestyle. And as hard as that might be, I will say, you know, sometimes you have to take the weeds out to truly be the person that you were expected to be and that you're destined to be. And, and high, have high hopes for yourself because that's what this list is all about. And if, you, if you've made it through this entire video for 56 minutes or whatever it has been at this point, I'm sorry. I know it's a long one, but if you've made it this far, there's probably a reason for that. It's probably because something like this is of interest to you, which means you truly are a part of the 1%, even if you haven't conquered this yet, because you have the desire. And sometimes desire is half the battle. Getting there, that's the easy part. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Be healthy, my friends. I'll see you next time.